In my last video, I had a subscriber ask a great question that I thought was video worthy. So, at John Royal 4913, this video is for you. Hopefully you find it helpful. His question was how to merge a wing to a fuselage to create those beautiful wing fillets at the wing root that we see on so many aircraft. By the way, guys, keep those questions coming. It helps me to know what you would like to see and learn. Otherwise, I'm shooting in the dark. Now, his question was geared specifically towards T-spline modeling because that's what we were doing. But in this video, I'm going to show several methods of arriving at the same place. Well, sort of. One is actually better than the others. So let's get started. To make this fun and interesting, we're going to perform this modeling by referencing a downloaded North American P-51D 3D model that you can go get for free. That's right. This model is actually available on the GrabCAD website as a free download. And as a bonus, this artist actually included a step file, which is fantastic for editing in Fusion 360. The artist's name is Anirun Rayo. I hope I'm not butchering your name. My apology if I did. But you, sir, do beautiful work. But if I could offer just a couple observations, the first thing that struck me was up front here. What direction of rotation does a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine turn? I'll let you guys debate that one in the comments. The second observation is the radiator scoop. Maybe I'm wrong, but something just seems a little out of whack on the shape. What do you guys think? Either way, this is just constructive criticism, easily fixable things. And so thanks again for the beautiful model. Now back to the question about the wing roots. I'll show a T-spline conversion. I'll also show where they can go wrong, likely accidentally. I'll then show variations of the fillet command on surfaces. Then I'll show you my favorite method, which is a loft. Guys, surface modeling is far more flexible than you may at first expect and can render perfect results. So make sure to watch to the end to see all of these. Since we're starting with T-spline modeling, I'm simply going to quickly rough out the shape of this model by using the face command and then enabling object snap. I won't spend a lot of time on this explaining it because this was covered in a previous video here in quite a bit of depth. So go back and watch that if you need a refresher. My goal is to get us to a starting point where we can create the accurate wing root transition. So there we have it. Now let's work to join these two separate T-spline bodies. I begin the process by using the insert point command and attempting to trace an outline where I want the edge of the wing root transition to appear. This may take a couple of tries because sometimes once you hit the OK button, you may notice the T-splines shift around too much. There's no real harm done here. You can always delete some of your lines, redraw them, or use your modify command to bump and adjust. A tip here is to try to create shapes that have ideally four sides. Ideally, no triangles and ideally no n-gons, which is a really nerdy word for five-sided face. Sometimes this may be difficult, but I found the more you can implement the strategy, the cleaner your models will be and the sooner you get the results you want. Now you'll see me deleting faces from the T-spline body that I no longer want. Let's repeat that process on the wing. You can see me cutting out a roughed out location where I want this wing transition to occur. Then I delete the faces I no longer need. Now in order to join these two separate T-spline bodies, I will use the bridge command. You'll notice that I've elected to have it create three faces. The truth is two faces would have probably been adequate. And what you'll learn very quickly with T-splines is that less is more. You will then select the arrow here for side one and pick the edges you want to join. Then on the opposite side, select the arrow for side two and begin selecting. It's important to note that the edges must either be equal in number or a multiple of numbers. Otherwise, you will get a warning message to that effect. It looks mostly right, but you'll notice right here because I did this in two different attempts that there are two edges that are open. So here you would either use Merge Edge or Weld Vertex to close. Again, here I had to merge my edges as well. 
Now I'm adding additional geometry by using the subdivide command right under the scoop. And in the last section here, I simply use the fill command. Under fill hole mode, in this case, I'll use fill star. And this gives me the least amount of geometry. And I can then use the insert point command to draw in exactly where I want it. Now I'm looking for ways to reduce my geometry here because again, less is more. It can be a bit maddening and take some practice, but really the more you can reduce, the smoother your model will become. Give it some time and practice and you'll begin to intuitively understand what works and what doesn't. I have found it helpful when I get completely confused or frustrated to simply insert a primitive shape, be that of a cube or a sphere or quad ball, and study the shape of the loops and rings that make it so simply. Then I will see how to apply that to my model. So that pretty much covers T-splines here. Let's try this with a fillet. I'm going to use the trim command and use each of these bodies to cut each other. So you'll see me cut a hole out of the fuselage here. Then when I orbit around, again I use the trim command using the fuselage to cut the wing. Now I have a nice sharp edge. In order to use the fillet command, I have to join these two together. The default fillet command will almost surely fail. So notice here that I've selected under radius type variable. This allows me to specify a radius point anywhere along this path. Now I can change the radius value at any of these points I select. So you'll see towards the leading edge and under the belly there was a very tight radius. As it goes over the top of the wing, I expand this somewhat, and then at the trailing edge, I expand even further. That gets me reasonably close, but understand that all we are defining here is radius values. Fusion is doing the math to find out where they intersect the body. Well, it kind of looks right, but I'm going to let Lars chime in here just a bit on fillet and curvature. This curve that goes together on the corners of your phone, um, that is not just a fillet like you have inside of your, your CAD software. That actually has a curvature uh, to it. Um, if it was just a standard fillet, there would actually be like kind of like a little mark and you maybe even be able to fill, fill it with your fingers. It wouldn't be like smooth. And, uh, I think the best explanation I've heard about it is uh, go out and look at your car and see the reflection going down the, the side. Your car kind of like have a curve to it and you will see the light from the sun kind of like plays over that curve. It's all smooth. Thank you, sir. Lars is a great resource I've found to learn how to make anything. Check him out at CAD CAM Stuff. Now let's get back to making airplanes. I do agree with him. Fill it is not the way to go. Let's now focus on my favorite approach, a loft. I begin this by creating an offset plane at the position where I want to create a sketch. Then I move it and grip edit it into position. Now I create a sketch and using a spline tool, I can then trace exactly where I want the termination point of my wing transition to be. My control points give me the ability to then go back and move these as precisely as I want until I'm completely happy with them. Here I'm tightening the radius on the back one and grip editing the others into positions that I like. Once I'm happy with this, I simply extrude it into a solid body. Then I extrude again and it cuts not only itself, but the surface body. Now I'm using the offset face command on the fuselage and I'm attempting to use just a couple of the faces to make it grow a little bit off the model. I loft it at the final part that was open here, then join all the faces together. I'm doing a little cheat here. I'm using the patch command to close all the sections of all the bodies temporarily. Once I do that in the solids editing commands, I can simply use the combine tool. I did all of this just to cut the body exactly where I wanted it. Now back in the surface modeling tab, when I remove an unneeded face, I'm back to a surface model. I'm now exactly set up to do my lofting. To make this easier for me, I'm going to offset a plane. I did all of this just to cut the body exactly where I wanted it. I'll then split the wing in that same spot. 
I also will mirror this wing over and using a loft command create the center section of the wing that exists as the real plane has it. You can see me making the edge of each side tangent to each other so that there's a slight bow from left to right. Now I loft my first section. You'll see how I change both profile 1 and profile 2 from connected to tangent and it created beautiful transition. But let's keep going. I'll work on the back side now. I'm not happy how it transitioned at the trailing edge, so I'm going to add some additional controls here. I'm going to create a 3D sketch and I'm going to project include 3D geometry on both trailing edge and the line on the fuselage. Then I will create a spline between the two points. Then using constraint options, I will use the tangent constraint to both sides. Now I have forced this geometry to go exactly where I want it. When I loft this section and select the two profiles, I will also add two rails. The one on the left is the previous loft, the one on the right will be my spline. Notice that you also have the option when selecting the rails to also make these tangent which I failed to do here. And it will show up as a result. It'll be a slight issue later. But overall, I'm very happy with how this looks. Now, when I do the bottom section, I'm not quite happy at the control that I have on the trailing edge. When I attempt to change these edges from connected to tangent, I get a failure because of intersecting geometry. So, I'm going to take another approach. I'm going to create a new offset plane towards the back of the trailing edge, and I'm going to split my body. I'll then remove the section I don't like, because these were identically matched before the split. When I rejoin them, even the seam goes away. I will join all these pieces together, and I will simply now use the patch command. I will then define each of the edges here as tangent. I'll then join all of this to the rest of the body. Now, when I look at my display with edges turned off, you can see what a smooth transition this all made. Here it is in rendered preview mode. Notice that you can actually see a slight mark in the seam at the top of the wing between the front and the back lofts. That's there because of where I failed to select tangent control on that edge. I could simply delete the face and do it again correctly if I wanted, but it's a fairly minor flaw and I think you understand from here. The last thing I want to cover here is what makes a loft so superior and why I say that surface modeling is quite flexible. What I didn't cover in this video was tangency weight. When you change your profile connection type from connected, you have the option for either tangent or curvature. These two options behave just a slight bit differently from each other. They also open up further options for refinement. One of these is you have the option to control tangency weight. On each side, these additional controls give you incredible control over exactly the curve you're trying to achieve. If you'd like to fall down a rabbit hole on the subject, I'd recommend looking up a video on understanding surface continuity and the difference between G0, G1, G2, and G3. But as for this video, we're done here. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you have some questions you think I could answer, I would love to hear them. Or just watch my next video here.